This is another guitar that's certainly got a lot of mojo left in it. Today we're gonna fire it up, see how it sounds, and reveal the hidden secret about this guitar. But first of all, I wanna thank you guys so much for showing so much love on that last video. If you haven't seen episode one of this series, I'll leave a link down below. But you guys have been outstanding, leaving so many amazing comments that really actually has helped me piece together all the mysteries of that guitar. And also, thank you to everyone that gave that video a thumbs up and has recently subscribed to the channel. It really does mean a huge amount. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But for now, we're gonna fire this custom gem up and see what it's all about and unravel some mysteries. Let's do it. This guitar still has that slightly brighter sound that I remember so fondly and uh, it makes it really really great for recording solos because of that little extra brightness and cut that you seem to get with it. So this guitar was actually a birthday present from Ibanez and I'm guessing I was 11 or so at the time, perhaps 10, but I think I was 11. And I remember seeing it for the first time and being like absolutely blown away by that custom finish and you know seeing that McRocklin uh, logo embedded in the paintwork. Really, really awesome. But when I was first given this guitar, it had totally different pickups in it. And I quickly changed it to a sound that I was more familiar with, the tone zone. The single coil and neck position, however, um, I think those are pickups that I actually custom specced with Damasio back in the day when you wanted to make a custom spec Damasio pickup, they would so they would fax you this form over and you'd fill in like the tonal properties, your brightness, output, and it had you know, about 30, 40 you know, kind of questions and a, a one to 10 and you'd go through all of them and fill it out and then you'd fax it back and then they'd build it and that's how they kind of customized the, the pickups for your ears or taste back then. Pretty cool. <laughs> notice on that last video there was a lot of questions about my tone and signal chain what effects am I using and so on and it's actually pretty complex there's a lot going on that kind of makes all these tones happen but if you want to see a video on that let me know in the comments below that could be a real fun video to make um yeah let me know now there's one thing about this guitar that I've never felt on any other guitar ever this guitar also has the thinnest neck that I have ever played in my life. Let me stand up and show you some close-ups of this neck. It is crazy thin. Let me know what you think about this. I don't know if you guys can get an idea. You can see the action is very, very low on this guitar as well. You can see that neck is super thin. And it plays really nicely as well. Maybe that is one thing that's contributing towards the bright sound that it has. Let me flip it over and you'll see the other side of that neck. Just a really, really thin neck. But it plays great. Because this guitar has a bit of a brighter tone, it's the guitar that I use for a lot of the solos on my instrumental record, 91 to 95, and it sounded great on, on that record as well. Even now when I listen back to the guitar tones, I'm like, yeah, uh, that, that sounds great. I wouldn't change anything about that. Really, really cool. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
I'd say overall, this guitar was a very close second to the Floral Gem, that was probably my main guitar back in the day. But I used this guitar for a, a lot of TV appearances. This guitar was also out on the road with Bad For Good when we did the Joe Satriani tour. And it was used a lot. But it does have a hidden secret. This guitar underneath is actually a floral gem. Let's bring it in, let's bring it in. So when Ibanez made this guitar for me back in the day, they obviously took a floral gem and just painted right over it. I mean, you can see the curtains like there. <laughs> the curtains are coming out here. It's, I find it a little bizarre. Bear in mind, I didn't know this until many, many years later until I chipped a little bit of the guitar off. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's a floral gem under there. Why? Like, why would they paint over a floral gem? I, I just, I just, I have no idea to this day why they did that. And also this guitar is actually, it's super light. Probably the lightest gem that I've ever held. I don't know if that's because it's got such a thin neck um, or it's just a particularly light piece of wood. Not sure. But bear in mind, obviously with the additional layers of paint that this guitar has, um, it still remains very, very light. My other floral gem sounds really rounded and punchy, where this is like really quite bright and cutting, but it's still a floral gem, so perhaps that really, really thin neck is contributing towards that. But when I discovered that it had a floral body underneath, my mind was just like, what? Completely confused and blown. <laughs> I dig it now, it's really, really cool. Um, I'm not gonna peel any more of this paint off to reveal more of that floral gem, but I think it's pretty cool. What do you guys think? And also, do you think it's a bit of a weird move for Ibanez to do that? Are you with me on that? What do you think? Let me know, I'll be interested to know your opinions. <laughs> It's a bit of an odd one, a kind of mashup if you like. You can see the front also has that, that floral pattern under there, but you can see that they've obviously kind of lacquered over it and then painted over that. It's, it's certainly got a lot of character and I really do love this guitar. It's got just so many history, so many cool moments and um, you know, guitars like this where you've had them for a long time, but you've also played the hell out of them. You know, you've put a lot of your personality and feelings into your instrument and I'm sure you guys can relate with me on that. So do let me know what you think uh, about the fact that Ivan has painted over a floral gem. <laughs> Well guys, I think that about wraps it up for guitar number two in this series. Thank you again to everybody that's hit the like button, that's subscribed to the channel. It really does mean a huge amount, so thank you. We will continue this series on to guitar number three very soon. But for now, you guys take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next video. All right, take it easy, bye.